Today we're going to finish volumes by similar cross section. And you might recall, volumes by similar cross section are a little bit intimidating at the beginning because you lose some of that predictability about what kind of shape this is going to be. When we were looking at slices and shells, no matter what kind of shape you got, you knew it's going to be round, it's going to be, um, you got the same kinds of formulas coming up again and again. You got your pi r squared minus r squared for annular slices, and then you've got your, for cylindrical shells, what did you have? Remember when you, yeah, good, you, you cut out, you cut out your cylindrical shell, right, and when you dissect it, you just get your 2 pi r and your h. So you get the same formula again and again, and of course you've got your, you know, your appropriate delta x, delta y, whatever. But when you have a look at similar cross-section, it just blows open the door, and it's just like, well look, whatever you want. Now that's the hardest thing about them. However, as you'll see, like, especially when we look at cylindrical shells, sometimes the integral you get out of it, and just the algebra and the how many integrals you've got and all the boundaries, algebraically is hard. Almost universally, you'll find volumes by similar cross-section, the mathematics of it is easier, okay? So, morning, excellent. We're, okay, we're at capacity, we're not. Um, so you will find the mathematics if it's not difficult, but it's just visualizing what's going on. So, for those of you who just walked in, this is where we're going to begin. We're going to, um, uh, build this volume step by step. So what you've got here is two graphs. You've got y equals cos x and you've got y equals uh, negative cos x between naught and pi on 2. And I'm viewing this like as a normal graph because this is just looking straight down and I'm looking at the base. Okay. So here's the idea. Uh, you don't necessarily need to draw these parts on but from this base I want you to imagine Having areas, having rectangles that are all vertical, like this. And each one of these is going to form the base of a triangle. Okay. So what's going to extend up from here? Do you remember last time we looked at a circular base and we extended up squares? Yes? So from here, we're going to extend up triangles. But well, the question, of course, is, well, what kind of triangle would you like? So now, to, to demonstrate this, right, we need to take this diagram and draw next to it our kind of 3D on an, on an angle view of this. So if you put your y-axis heading sort of off into the distance and you've still got your <coughs> x-axis, which is horizontal. Now this will be a little bit challenging. I find this difficult too. Um, I need to, a bit more of this. Uh, because you're viewing it at an angle, things that were symmetrical before are no longer symmetrical. So you, you want to try and do this as best as you can. So my advice is, on the y-axis, mark out your negative one and your one, which even though we're putting perspective on this, we don't have like, um, uh, we don't have a vanishing point in our, in our diagram. So I don't know if you guys um, are familiar with how vanishing points work. If I put say, um, how many do I need? If I just have two, I think that'd be fine. If I wanted to draw a cube with a vanishing, with two vanishing points, like this and this, this is the idea that things do actually get smaller with perspective. So for example, um, I would have something like this, and you'd say, okay, here are the faces of my cube, and you can see, right, oh, okay, I need this one and this one. You can see, for example, this edge is clearly shorter looking than this edge, which is exactly what things do in, in the real world, right? But here we're imagining, like this thing just goes on forever and there's no perspective distance changing. So that's why these should be the same, so that we can make our diagram as accurate as we possibly can. Here comes the tricky bit. I now want to do these bits, but this one's squashed over, the top one is squashed, and this bottom one is stretched out, you see? That should be, that's still pi on two. That's still a right angle, it's just we're viewing it from a funny angle, okay? So I'm going to draw a shape kind of like this, kind of like that. Okay, so you see it? Off the angle, bless you. Okay, now, we don't want to draw too many of these because your diagram gets um, rapidly confusing. So I'm going to draw maybe, uh, I think I'll just go with two for now. Um, I'm going to draw a couple of these sort of flat bases, right? So I'm going to draw one of the long ones and one of the short ones, okay? Now this particular HSC question, what they've asked us to do is to create a series of triangles and what binds them is that they're all isosceles triangles and the isosceles, the equal lengths of these triangles are all one unit in length, one unit in length, okay? Now just think about this for a second. Um, you can actually see, I've already drawn one of them. If you imagine at x equals zero, I should put some axes on this. Label that, <coughs> x, y, x. 
On the y-axis, at x equals zero, if you were to imagine using this part here, this interval, as the base, and then you go, well, what triangle can I construct on top of that such that the two equal lengths, because you know these lengths will change, the bases will keep changing, but I want the equal lengths that go up to be one unit each, right? Where will that triangle be? And the answer is, it will be on the actual line. This is it, in fact, because if you imagine that's the base, right? And then it's like, oh, okay, from here, I need a, a sign that's gonna be one unit long. But if it's exactly one unit long, it's gonna go from here, and it's just gonna end there, right in the middle. Like, it's gonna lay flat, and it's gonna do the same from the opposite end, okay? But, as you move further in, what happens is, it's like, well, if I went one unit down this way, I'm gonna have to lift off the axis in order to still be one and still connect, okay? So what you wanna do is draw a little vertical line here, okay, because I'm gonna come off the axis, and then you've got your two sides over there. So you have a very flat triangle on this end of the diagram, okay? As you move across, right, you can see here, Again, if I have my, my one and my one, they're starting to do this. You see, they're sort of coming up, right? And here, they're gonna be quite tall. So again, draw a vertical line, like that. I suppose you could call that a z-axis if you like. But it's gonna be quite tall, like that. And there's one last triangle, not really triangle, that we're going to put in here, which is on the end here, okay? Now, just like over here, right, you had a long base, and so your two sides are just lying flat, okay? But as you get, from this end over here, and you progress across that way, it goes taller, 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 until you get to the point where it's like, well, look, my base is only, well, there is no base, so therefore the two edges, as it were, are standing right next to each other. Actually, it shouldn't go up quite that tall. Okay? So you can see I've got a series of triangles in here. I suppose on our, you, you probably could fit in one more in the middle, um, but I'm, I'm happy with that for now. When I have my series of triangles, you can see they get taller and taller and taller up into this point. So like with the square, with the, the circular base and the square profiles, right? You kind of get this ridge along here, okay? I'm in fact going to draw that line, but I'm gonna put it in an extra color as well so you can see what's going on. So it's a weird shape, right? It's a weird shape. It's quite hard to see here. Do you remember I told you it's a problem of vision? Now, interestingly enough, you can actually work out everything you need to here by drawing one more diagram, a simple one. You don't need to add more detail to this. You've got all the information you need. You can actually work out the volume. However, like even though I've said to you many times, draw a diagram so you can understand it better because then you can work it out. Here, I actually think you've developed all the understanding you need, but that doesn't mean you know what you're working out. Like you calculate, you do all, you crunch the numbers and you're like, well, I have a number at the end, but what am I even doing? So, I spent some time last night drawing. Now, I had to do it here. I was contemplating doing it for you. Here we go. Um, I was contemplating doing it for you, um, like on the board and doing it live, but I just couldn't, I, I couldn't convincingly do it so it would be easier to see, okay? So here's the shape and you can see, I, because I did it before, it looks a bit better. My axes are a little more stretched out too. You've got your cos x line, and your negative cos x line, right? And then here is this ridge, and I haven't drawn any of the triangles in yet, okay? So what I did is I drew it, and um, I time-lapsed it, so hopefully this ends up being a little clearer. There we go. Okay, now I just had to, these are the bases, right? I um, alternated the colors so it'd be a little easier to see. I need to mark out where all of the tops of the triangles would be, and then I started drawing triangles. Now I know there are lots of them, and it feels a bit like, whoa, my eyes. Okay, so I did this to make it a little bit easier to see. Okay, so do you sh see the shape that's emerging? Okay, what you've got is it's kind of like an opera housey sort of thing, yeah? Like these are the sails. This is what you end up with. They make it a little bit clearer. There you go, okay. So this is the shape we're actually doing. Now, do you need a diagram this amazing, <laughs> okay? By the way, this took me 15 minutes to draw and I sped it up somewhat. Um, do you need a diagram this amazing to work out the volume? Clearly not, okay? But I think just as mathematicians, right? Like you want to know what is it that I'm doing? Um, also, now that you've got an idea, a better idea of this shape, when we arrive at a number at the end, I'm going to ask you, apart from looking at an answer, like a solution, how do you know we're in the right ballpark or not? I, I want you to leave this shape, singe it into your retina, okay? Because I'm about to turn it off. And think about, well, okay, what's a way that I could, do you remember when we were doing uh, this shape, I think it was, uh, what did it look like? Something like this. I think it looks sort of like, 
Do you, do you remember this guy? Oh, no. Right? Yeah, or kinda, right? So we had a, it was sort of like a sleeper shell, and I said, okay, we came up with a number, but then I said, well, can you approximate this? And all we did was we said, just imagine this parcel of curve. We straightened that out, and then it became a cylinder, another cylinder, and it was easy to work out, yeah, we're in the right ballpark. I'm not going to spoil it for you yet. I just wonder, what would you compare this to? Because at the end of this, when we get a number out, I will compare this to something to, to confirm that we're in the right, um, right zone of solutions. But what would you do without me telling you? Right? So you have a think about it. Okay, shall we work out this opera house sale volume? Should we do it?